Hello everyone, as I said in the last video, I'm here with a Leopard 2 A6. Our kit is again a Tamiya Classic. The kit is absolutely fantastic. Every part fits perfectly, no muss, no fuss. First of all, I start building from the parts of the tank such as the wheels, sprocket wheel and the suspension system. I cut it from the three, cleaned it and glued it to the tank. This part is given in order to put the wheels in alignment. Once you finish assembling torsion bars, you need to attach this part to the suspension system and ensure that they are all aligned. In this way, we make sure that all wheels are going to touch to the ground, I mean the tracks. Two pieces has been given for the lower hull armor. The tail lights are given as a clear part. I don't know the reason but I'm going to paint them in the end so I just glue them. I glue the side mirrors and headlights on the front of the tank. I glue the tools on the back in the same way. I always paint after gluing these parts. It is always a bigger risk for me to apply glue to the painted surface. This transparent acetate-like material is given for periscope glasses. It looks very nice actually, and easy to use. Of course I use white glue to glue them. Since the white glue becomes transparent after it dries, it won't be a problem if it overflows. The Leopard 2 A6 tank has got a 120mm L55 smoothbore gun. After cutting this piece from the 3, I clean the mold parts and glue it with the Tamiya Extra Tin Cement. Since the gun barrel is given in two parts, it is necessary to be careful while gluing it together. Here, the more smoothly you glue the two parts, the less leveling work will be done afterwards. While seeing a perfect circle in the gun barrel of a real tank, it will not look nice if there are defects such as gaps and level differences in the gun barrel we will make. With this tool, I scrape off the level differences, if any, in the barrel and make them equal. Actually, it's not a life-saving tool, but it helps. After scraping the joints, I apply the Tamiya glue to the whole surface again, so I soften the surface texture that is deteriorated due to scraping. I combine the parts that will allow the barrel to be attached to the body. Tamiya use plastic parts called polycap to facilitate the movement of the barrel. In this way the barrel can move smoothly. After combining the barrel, I sanded it with various levels of sandpaper to get a perfect look.
Then I complete the assembly of the upper armor. Here you can see what a beautiful engineering Tamiya has. The pieces fit into place like a Lego. I mount the arrowhead armor piece on the front of the turret, which greatly enhances the armor capability of the Leopard 2A6 tank. This piece of armor is the most distinctive piece that separates the Leopard 2 tank from the Leopard 2A6 or A5. Periscope glasses of the Leopard tank appear in transparent green colors in the reference pictures. To create this effect, I apply the transparent green color of Tamiya with an airbrush. There are two baskets at the back of the tank, and for these baskets, Tamiya gave this grill looking material that we used before. I put this material on the templates and cut them accordingly. It is better to use a sharp knife when cutting. I tried it with scissors, but I could not manage. I glue the pieces with super glue, then mount it in place. By the time we finish smoke grenade launchers on the side of the turret, our work here is done. Tamiya's weakest chain in this kit is the tow cable. They have given rope instead of plastic or metal tow cable, so I wanted to try something different instead and found some wires in my toolbox. I tried to give the same look, frankly the result was not exactly what I wanted. I tried to do it with my hands, but I realized that I had to work with a different material. I learned another technique to do this later, but I had already finished building the tank. Maybe in the future I will do that. Well, we finished the assembly part and proceed to the painting. Now I will prime the model as usual, but I will use the acrylic paint of Revell. Choosing this paint has no special reason. I just use it to finish off a paint that is left on my hand. But as you can see, paint is literally like a putty. I use acrylic airbrush thinner of Vallejo for thinning the paint, but it can also be thinned with water if you want. Here, the most important thing is working in a separate paint cup and using sufficient amount of thinner. I believe that in this way you can airbrush all kind of paints. I use Badger Patriot 0.5mm as airbrush. I generally use wide nozzles for primers. Right after primer, I use three-tone camouflage colors from the Mr. Color Lacquer series for NATO tanks. I dilute these paints again with Mr. Color Lavender Thinner. Especially beginners to the modeling may be asking questions now. How to paint lacquer over acrylic paint? Doesn't lacquer paint harm acrylic? If you try to paint with a brush, the brush will constantly touch to the surface and it might damage the underlying paint. But when painting with an airbrush, if the acrylic is dry enough, it will not cause any harm. After I apply the main green color, I switch to other camouflage colors. Here I draw the camouflage first with a pencil on the tank. I make the patterns exactly as shown in the manual. This method will make your job quite easy. Since I'm doing a detail work here again, I use Hardest Steam Bag airbrush with a 0.3mm nozzle.
While painting is over, I think it already looks good. In the weathering phase, I will first use this enamel wash paint from the AK Interactive company recommended for NATO camouflage to create a contrast as usual. I apply it to the edges and corners and the rivets. Then I clean the excess paint with a brush dipped in enamel thinner. Afterwards, I apply another shade of washing paint at different intensities and also not everywhere. There won't be a lot of dust or mud on the upper part of the tank, but I want to get some dirt on the lower part. I use this brown earth dust and dirt deposit paint for this. You should be careful when applying this paint with the airbrush. Due to the structure of the paint, even if you thin it with enamel thinner, it dries very quickly. It doesn't clog the nozzle, but when you press the trigger again, it can throw a lump of paint on the model. After it dries, it looks very realistic. I apply the same paint to the side armor in very small amounts. The reference photos are very important. You can find many photos or videos of the leopard tank. In this way, you can see how much mud accumulates in which parts of the tank and apply it similarly. If you make uneven weathering effects on both sides, it will give a more interesting look to the model. We continue the weathering process with fresh mud and dark mud enamel paints. Here I first apply dark mud and then fresh mud. I dip the brush in the paint and apply it on the tank with the help of a toothpick. Here the size and shape of the brush you use and the amount of the paint you take on the brush will affect the paint splash on the surface. I applied little more paint on the other part of the tank and didn't like it. So I cleaned the excess paint with the enamel thinner. In this way, the transitions on the surface were softened. When I have cleaned enough, I continued with the same practice. Although it is very boring for me, I did the same process to the lower part with the same techniques.
Well, finally, the tracks. I use the same technique that I saw from Uncle Night Chef. First, I paint the tracks in dark gray, and then I use the acrylic paints of Life Color series in the order that I show. Since it's an acrylic paint, I thin it with plenty of water and apply it on the tracks like a wash. I switch to the other color when the color I applied is dry. Here I apply the first two colors to the tracks with a brush and the last two colors by splashing them with a toothpick. I paint the rubber parts of the track to the tire black color. Of course we cannot leave the tracks without dirt and mud, weathering should be on the same level with the lower part of the tank, so I use the same techniques that I used for lower part of the tank. But here I clean the rubber parts with a cotton sweat, as the roll wheels always touch these areas and the weathering here can be a little different. Finally I put the tracks in place. These types of vinyl tracks can be really annoying. Sometimes the tracks can stay short or the parts to hold each other at the two ends of the tracks may be too small or poorly designed. But the quality of Tamiya eliminates these problems. You must use super glue for the vinyl tracks. The regular adhesives will not be enough for this task. Well, yes, our model ended like this. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video.